So we're going to take a look at Chebyshev polynomials. I've got the first 10 of those Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind from our reading. So we're going to use the expression object to implement these. What we do is we use the signal expression object. And any of the calculations that we do in place of x, we are doing a calculation on a vector. So think of a signal as a vector, and that's what that v stands for. So variable vector in the first inlet. Um, so we could have v2, v3, etc., and that would give us a second and a third inlet so that we could process multiple signals. Um, we've seen dollar sign $f before for float, so we could use data values, but right now we just need a single signal or vector. So let's take a look at this. So this one we're not going to bother with. That's not an audible signal. That's just a flat one. So there's no movement. There'd be no, no sound that we could hear there. Uh, and this one is just the same as the input. So T1 of X equals X. Let's like take a look at the second one. We have 2x squared minus 1. And the way we implement that with the expression object is we use POW for power. So we take the vector, comma, squared, and put that in parentheses. And then we're multiplying that by 2. So 2x squared minus 1. This allows us to add and create partials using fewer oscillators than we would if we were using an additive method. So that's going to be a partial of this fundamental. Now if we wanted to, we could add this expression to that one and get both partials from a single oscillator. So now we have T1 and T2 in the same expression object so that we're getting two partials with one oscillator. So here we have T3. So we use that POW for power. So this vector to the power of three. And we just put a comma there surrounded in parentheses. So power, and then we have argument, comma, argument. So this is just like an object box, but we're using it in text. And so the output of this expression, we're multiplying by 4. So that is 4x cubed here. And then subtracting 3x from it. So same thing there. That'll give us a single partial. And we could add these partials to it to get multiple partials from the same oscillator. And we just do that by adding these different expressions to each other. And so any of these other polynomials, we would implement the same way. And we can add them and combine them together to get specific partials um, that we can then modify the oscillators in real time. Um, we can even modify the values in real time by simply substituting variables for some of these. Um, so instead of a 2 here and a 4 here, we could do variable float 2, variable float 3. Um, so whatever parameters we want to change inside of the expression, uh, we can do so. And that'll just add inlets that correspond to each of these. So you couldn't have like a vector one and a float one in the same expression box because one designates the first inlet. So you'd have vector one and then float two. And then, you know, once you start to add these up, um, 
you know, some of these will sum together. So if we were to add T3 and T5, you see they both have an X cubed um, term to the polynomial. So plus 4 minus 20. So this would be minus 16 cubed. And minus 3 plus 5, that would be plus 2x. So you could combine those into a single statement without explicitly adding the entire equation each time. So these, these simplify down and you can still get multiple partials that way.